guys, this is Etan Sun from Sunbros. Today I'm really excited to be bringing you guys this brand new video, but before we get started with that, I want to make sure I remind you guys on how to get entered in for a chance to win our guaranteed skin giveaways that we do every Sunday night during our one hour question and answer live stream. All you got to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel, give the video a thumbs up and comment below with your in-game name and which skin you'd like to receive on either the NA or EU servers under 700 vouchers. And remember, the more videos that you do this with that are uploaded each week, the higher chance you have to win. Alright guys, welcome to the Baldum How to Build video. I know this one is a little bit late as I've been super busy and not feeling too well, but it's time to uh, discuss the Baldum build. As always, we're going to be starting in the hero page and we're going to discuss uh, Baldum's abilities so we get a better idea of who Baldum is and how he operates in the game to figure out how best to build him. Baldum's passive is Hulking. Baldum's physique grants him 18% bonus armor. His normal attacks deal an additional 20 damage plus... Uh, it's the yellow is armor scaling damage, which is pretty rare. I think he's the only hero in the game who has that uh, and it all, it, it's all extra magic damage So we're gonna keep track of that because uh, the passive is a massive part of who he is as a hero 18% bonus armor is quite a bit of extra armor and the fact that he gets extra normal attack damage That's based on his armor is very important and we'll talk about the scaling for that in just a little bit His first ability is wild charge uh, this one starts with a 13 second cooldown that goes all the way down to 11 seconds, but it's one of his better abilities uh, Or actually all of this entire kit is great. Both of them is a really solid kit uh, It's highly dependent on how you put it all together, but I really like all of his abilities a lot uh, Baldum dashes forward a short distance dealing a solid amount of physical damage again based off of attack damage as well as armor It scales up in two different ways, which is really awesome uh, to enemies along the way and he stops when he runs into an enemy hero and then swings his totem and tosses the hero behind him dealing additional physical damage equal to 8% of the targets maximum HP so not his own maximum HP if it was his own maximum HP then building up his health would be a lot more important than building up his armor which is what we're gonna end up doing a lot of because of that um, and it slows the target by 90% for one second his second ability is wild stomp uh, the cooldown starts at 9 seconds and it's static throughout all 6 levels. Baldum stomps the ground dealing damage based on you know, 50, 50 base that goes up to 75 level 6, 50 based on the AD scaling, 5 based on the armor scaling, uh, physical damage to enemies nearby and slowing them by 30%. Enemies affected by the stomp deal 15% less physical damage to Baldum for 1 second so they do a reduced damage to Baldum so it's a really good tanking ability as well as uh, crowd control ability and damage ability. And then the cooldown for of this ability is reduced by 0.3 seconds when it hits an enemy hero. And here's the important down. The damage reduction goes from 15 to 30% by level 6. The cooldown is static, but the 0.3 seconds is important. Baldum ends up stomping the ground 6 times. So the total amount of reduction is uh, up to 1.8 seconds. And from the testing that I've done, if you get 40% cooldown reduction and you hit an enemy hero throughout the end all with all six stomps by the end of it all um, Baldum will be able to reactivate a second ability um, with less than two seconds to go it's like 1.7 seconds maybe like something like that uh, maybe maybe 1.8 um, seconds I'm not sure exactly the amount because you can't see milliseconds in the in the thing but um, it's less than it's right less than two seconds um, which is one of the one of the reasons why I really like the idea of building some cooldown reduction on Baldum so that he can essentially keep his wild stomp up because it's one of his better abilities in, in the fact that it not only makes him tankier, it also slows targets, it's a pretty healthy amount of crowd control, and it does a pretty good amount of damage. Um, so we're gonna be building some cooldown reduction in order to uh, allow Baldum to be able to activate wild stomp throughout the majority of any team fight that he's in. Not, and last of course is the ultimate wild prison. The cooldown for this starts at 70 seconds and goes down to 60 at level 3. Baldum smashes his totem into the ground, causing the ground to collapse and traps all enemies in the target area for 3 seconds, rendering them completely immobile. So they're untargetable, they can't move, um, they're completely stuck in this little circle when Baldum does that. They take a solid amount of damage, it's 400 base that goes up to 800 by level 3. 84 is the AD scaling, and 33 is the armor scaling portion of it. So again, all three abilities scale, including and the passive, all four of his um, abilities scale via armor. So armor helps him do more damage as well as helps him be more tanky. They're also slowed by 50% for two seconds after they're freed from the prison. So they take the damage, they're slowed when the prison is released. Okay, so now that we have a better idea of who Baldum is, what he brings to the table, let's go ahead to the go to go to the equipment page and let's figure out how we want to build them. 
Alright guys, now we're in the item building page and we're going to go ahead and build some really solid builds for you guys for Baldum. Um, we're going to be starting our first item on our build is going to be the Ages. And like we talked about when we were looking at his abilities and reading the descriptions, he builds damage off of armor. Armor is very important to his kit. He also has an amazing passive that gives him 18% extra armor, which is not only rare, it's actually really, really, really good. So <clears throat> the 360 armor that we get from the Aegis is the highest armor item in the game tied with uh, Shield of Lost. But the difference is, is that Shield of Lost does give us some nice health at 1200. Health isn't nearly as important to Baldum's build as getting some extra cooldown reduction, which is what we're going to get 20% of on the Aegis. And that's going to get us off to a really solid start of getting to our max of 40% cooldown reduction so we can spam his second ability and use his first ability and his ultimate as frequently as possible. The other thing that we get from it that's really, really good for him is his passive. Now, the Shield of Lost passive, all that, that, all that that does is reduces the attack speed of nearby enemies by 30%. Now, the actual range of that is really, really small. It's not that big. As opposed to the Aegis, which reduces the attack speed of everyone who's attacking him by 30%, as well as the movement speed of those targets by 15% for 3 seconds. And one of the reasons why that's really key is because the slowdown in movement speed will allow... Baldum to have extra time in order to catch up in order to either flip them or ult them or get them stuck in a second ability which causes that 30% second slow as well as the damage reduction. So when you get somebody in your second ability and you're reducing their, their damage by 30% on you and you're reducing their attack speed by 30% on you, it makes Baldum seem a lot more beefy against those heroes, against those heroes than his base stats would suggest. <clears throat> Alright, we're following that up of course with boots. And we're going to be getting Gilded Greaves. Now, one of the items I see frequently being built as far as boots are concerned on Baldum is going to be Hermes Select. And I'll tell you why this is not the greatest thing that you can do. Um, the reason why is because people want the movement speed bonuses on him. Whether you're playing him as a side laner or you're playing him as a roaming support, the boots, the extra movement speed could be nice in theory. But the problem is, is that you don't get that extra movement speed until after you exit battle. And if you guys know, exiting battle so let's say you're in a fight bot lane and you guys get a kill with the with the bot laner and you want to roam to a different laner to a different area it takes somewhere between three and five seconds for you to totally quote unquote exit a uh, battle so yeah, the move the amount of time that you actually get movement speed boost with Hermes select isn't nearly as good as you think uh, and the other thing is is that the the passive movement speed of 60 is the same you get for all of the boots uh, they're all 60 movement speed. So <clears throat> that's the amount of movement speed you're actually going to have when you're in a fight when really when Baldum needs the movement speed the most. Now, yeah, it could be helpful at times to get the extra movement speed out of battle when you're going from one lane to the next. But if you are really have good map awareness and you're uh, aware of what's going on, you, you know strategically the objectives that you want to attack, you should be able to get to events and areas in enough time to really be a difference maker and the extra movement speed won't really have ended up being much of a difference um <clears throat> now the reason we get gilded greaves instead is because we're only going to be building one other magic defense item in the game because we are going to be putting a heavy focus on armor to take the best advantage of the armor scaling extra damage as well as the extra 18 percent armor we get from his passive the other part of this that's really nice is we get the unique uh passive resistance which gives us a 35 second 35 percent um, reduction in all cool uh, all sorry you get a 35% reduction in all crowd control effects on him whether it's a slow a knock up a knock back a stun a root whatever doesn't matter it's gonna last 35% in less time allowing Baldum to be more involved causing more chaos crowd controlling more often in fights which is what he's best at doing <clears throat> all right next we're gonna be going with an item that I think is really really good on him and that's frost cape and the reason why it's really really good on him is because it's a great way for him to initiate and really get himself going now we get 10 percent cooldown reduction on this putting us at 30 percent for the build we're gonna get 200 armor which is great health nice we're building ourselves that we're making ourselves real nice and tanky and beefy frost cape is by no means one of the more tanky items in the game but the passive on him is extremely good Elemental power after using an ability the next normal attack. So let's say we um, let's say we use our first ability We charge in we flip somebody over our head and we auto attack them once bam The next normal attack after using ability reduces the movement speed of that person by 30% um, And then it deals damage 150 physical damage and then uh, 20 for each additional level So at max level you're looking at getting about five four hundred uh, extra damage so 20 um, times 15 is going to be 300 so sorry 450 extra damage 
um, in an, in in an area. So it's an AOE ability. So uh, the, that's scenario one. You flip somebody over your head, you hit them, boom, they're still by thirty percent. You do extra damage to them, uh, and there's a three second cooldown. Now, the other reason why I really love it is let's say you get involved in a team fight. And you hit your, your second ability, boom, you're getting those shock waves going out as he's stomping on the ground, doing AoE damage. Now you hit somebody with an auto attack. Now they're already getting slowed by 30% because of your second ability. Boom, you hit him with an auto attack. Frost Cape gets procced, and they get slowed by another 30%, totaling 60% slow, which is awesome. And then, um, as we discussed, because of all the cooldown production we're building on this build, you're going to be able to hit the second ability again within less than two seconds after the, the, it stops, and then you hit it again, and boom, you're right back at it. 30% slow from your second ability, and another 30% slow from Frostcape, and you can continually do the 60% slow thing while you're doing a pretty solid amount of AoE damage using his second ability. The, the way that Frostcape synergizes with Baldum is really, really good. One of the best, I think Baldum has one of the best Frostcape synergies in the entire game. The next item that we're looking at taking for him is we're going to build our first <clears throat> and only magic resistant item or magic defense item. That's the Medallion of Troy. We're going to cap ourselves out at 40% cooldown reduction. We're going to get some magic defense, um, 360, which is the highest magic defense item in the game, putting us... Um, a pretty good amount just from here built with Guild of Greaves at 470 and we're gonna get more HP a thousand more health uh, Which is gonna make us pretty pretty beefy with the health too. <clears throat> the passive is just a bonus It's not really even the reason we're taking it on trade, but it's a nice bonus He gains a shield that absorbs 300 damage plus 50 per level uh, which maxes out at uh, 1050 so you get um, you get 500 and then 750 from the extra and 300 so 1050 and it, it absorbs magic damage every 18 seconds now the reason why that's important is because we're not building an absolute we're crazy amount of magic defense we're building a lot more armor on this build uh, for a couple reasons number one you're more likely to face three to four physical damage dealing heroes on the other team um then 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 more you're really only likely to face at max two magic damage dealing heroes on the other team so that's going to be um, we're building more armor for that reason uh, alone, as well as the fact that Baldum is, is made to scale with armor in the first place. So, the fact that the shield helps against magic damage is great. We're already going to be reducing physical damage by so much. Anything extra against magic damage is a nice little cherry on top. Okay, so then we've got four items in, and the fifth item is an interesting choice. Now, this item is something I'm not generally fond of, but I'm taking in this case, and that's a male of pain. And there's a couple different reasons why. Obviously, it's very tanky in a space staff. 300 armor and 1200 max HP is one of the tankiest items in the game. Um, I'm not super fond of the passive in most scenarios because I think it does less actual physical damage back to people than people think. But the reason why it works so good with Baldum is this. Baldum's physical damage mitigation by end build, by end game, is going to be so uniquely high that he is going to be taking so little damage from the original damage that the 15 in the 15 percent physical damage that is deflected to the enemy as magic damage the calculation is based on the damage before the reduction and so we're going to be reducing so much of that it's going to get to the point where the damage that is reflected back to them is almost as much as the damage that Baldum ends up taking. Now, obviously, that's not taking into account items that are going to reduce Baldum's overall armor, but it's still a really big deal, and I think it's I think it's really awesome. And Baldum's going to be building so much armor that um, really his damage mitigation and physical damage mitigation is going to be so high that even if they build, even if they go with all three damage mitigation, uh, um, armor penetration items, Spear, Longinus, Rank Breaker, and Muramasa, he's still gonna have plenty of armor to spare, which is just speaks to the volume uh, of armor that we're gonna end up taking him. It's just ridiculous. But, Mail of Pain is gonna work really well because of how incredibly high the armor ends up being on him and the damage mitigation ends up going. And because the calculation is based before the damage reduction, that's why it's such a good item on him. Uh, as well as the base stats are really high now the last item is a swing item now This is based on a couple different factors how much money you have in what direction you would prefer to take There's two items that I think work really well for that the first one <clears throat> is gonna be aim of longevity now That is a little bit of a more expensive item um, Because it is the most expensive tank item in the game, but it gives a 1700 HP 100 HP for five seconds so it makes them get some nice regeneration <clears throat> It gives them some nice health and then the, pass, the first passive, I'm Golden, increases healing taken by 20%, um, which is going to come in handy if you're building Pura or you're playing with Pura or something like that. Um, but the second one is where we're focusing on increases maximum HP by 10%. Now, 
The important thing about this build is what does this build look like in game? Well, here I'm going to show you what it looks like in game. This is exactly what it looks like right here. So <clears throat> you're going to end up with 346 attack damage, not really what we're looking for. The HP with this build, you're going to end up at 13,286. It's a pretty hefty amount, guys. It's a lot of health. The armor is at 1595, giving you a total amount of damage, physical damage mitigation of 72.6%, which is extremely high. On the flip side, we're going to end up with uh, our magic defense all the way up to 639, giving us a 51.5% damage mitigation uh, for magic damage. And don't forget that we're also getting that big old 1050 damage magic shield every 18 seconds with um, our medallion of Troy. So. All in all, though, great item. We have some movement speed bonuses, stuff like that. We have some HP five seconds, but uh, but as you guys can see, also the cooldown uh, reduction, the cooldown speed is forty percent. So we max out our cooldown reduction. We have some resistance. I mean, this is a very all-encompassing, solid tanky build that gives us a lot of things we need. We got the resistance, cooldown reduction, a lot of magic defense, a lot of armor, a lot of HP. This makes Baldum one tanky bad dude it makes him very very potent now the other way that we can finish this build off and that's going to be build one of our set here is going to be with crimson banner <clears throat> now the, i'll tell you what the differences are in just a moment now crimson banner is going to give you 200 health 1500 max hp that's only 200 hp less but don't forget but don't forget that the other item also added 10 percent extra hp up on everything that we're doing and then the passive is great restores 20 percent of your hp over five seconds after earning a kill or assist now this is the base stats of that finished build. <clears throat> You're gonna notice we have less HP, a solid amount less. Like, let's see, the amulet HP is, um, amulet HP is 13,286, and the HP for the um, crimson banner is 11,879. So it's about a, it's about 1,500 HP. Armor goes up to 1,831 and does the physical damage reduction at 75.3. The magic defense is the same. That didn't change at all. And we still have 40% cooldown reduction and 35% resistance. So um, this makes you give you more armor, a solid amount less health. The damage the damage mitigation difference from the armor is only, what? Uh, let's see. The other one is 72. And this one is 75.3. So it's less than 3%. It's about 2.7% difference in the actual physical damage mitigation that you're going to get from the differences these two items. Now here is the difference where some people might prefer it. <clears throat> because... It's 1,500, which we're talking about 1,500 health compared to 2.7% mitigation of physical damage. Not that much difference in the base of it, but the where, it, where Crimson can come in handy and be the item that you choose. Number one, Crimson Banner only costs 2,090, which is going to be um, about 590 gold less than Amy Along Deadly. So it's quite a bit cheaper to buy, but then you get the passive. Let me minimize this so you guys can see. The passive from Crimson Banner is going to be... <clears throat> 20% um, extra health over five seconds. Now, when we're talking about the health that we have from this build, when I go back to the Crimson build, we have a total of 11,879. So we'll punch that into the old computer. 20% of that is 2,375 health. 20, actually, 2,376 20, health. Round it up. <clears throat> so we get 2,376 extra health in the middle of a fight. Now, it, so yeah, the overall health you get is actually going to be higher. You're going to be getting... Uh, when you add that to the 11,879, you're going to end up with a total of 14,255. But, obviously, the amount of longevity health is constant while this one comes in over 5 seconds in a team fight and has an 18 second cooldown. Um, so, <clears throat> I can really see the idea behind both. Do you want to just have a higher flat overall health of 1,500 extra health? Or would you ha rather have even more health via Crams and Manor's passive when you need it the most? It's really, I'll leave that one up to you guys. That's two solid ways of ending this build. I really like them both. I think they're both really, really good. And either way that you guys decide to go is gonna work fine. Now, I'm gonna give you guys a third build like I do frequently, and it's going to be, uh, it could be more of an interesting build. This one has been tested a lot less than the other two builds, and <clears throat> I would say it's a lot less quote unquote viable, but I think it could be a build that could provide a lot of, um, a lot of fun for you guys. It's more of an entertaining build than it is a build that's going to change your world and rock your world and give you guys the best Baldum game of all time. And this is going to be more build focused on Baldum doing AoE damage. Now, he's still pretty tanky. Don't get me wrong. He still has a lot of tankiness built into this, but it's more of a damage build. Now, you could play him in the jungle. It is, it isn't impossible. He's not completely worthless in the jungle. He actually can, he, he can kind of hold his own in there a little bit. 
Um, but you can also play this in lane if you want to. You'll have an extra punish in lane. Now, what we're going to get from this is we're going to get Leviathan, which gives us 100 base armor, 750 base HP. Of course, that HP goes up <coughs> um, 70 every stack for 15 stacks, which is going to give us um, an extra t uh, 1,050 extra health. So this item will actually cap out at 1,800 extra health, um, So which is really good. Yeah, 1,800 extra health for Leviathan. Which is a lot. It's, just, it's the actual highest total HP item in the game, flat. It doesn't end up being as much as the Amulet Longevity in the end, but it's higher flat. Uh, the 100 armor is nice to have. Then we're going to get flashy boots because we do want a little cooldown reduction. This one doesn't max out at 40%. You're going to want to build in some 10% cooldown reduction into your Arcana in this one. And then we're, uh, the other reason we're taking Leviathan, and the more important reason we're taking Leviathan, is because of the first passive, Flame Magic. Deals 90 plus 5 per level uh, magic damage to nearby enemy enemies every second and it deals double damage it means a must so this is gonna give <clears throat> this is gonna give baldum a really really solid burn damage which is gonna work to all the enemies in an aoe radius around him now we're gonna be taking of course mantle of rob which gives him attack damage armor and then it's gonna give him another burn damage 100 plus four per level match damage to all nearby enemies the exact same thing <clears throat> and they both work in combination of each other. So now we have a double burn going off every second around Baldum. When you throw that into combination with Baldum's second ability, which by the way scales with attack damage, so it'll get stronger because we're taking a mantle of Rob and because we're taking armor. <clears throat> um, the amount of damage we're going to be doing every second to everyone nearby because of th these three abilities working at the same time is actually pretty impressive and it's pretty entertaining. Um, it is entertaining to be able to just walk into a midst of enemy heroes during a team fight and with the second ability up watch them all get slowed and just start melting because you're doing the triple burn damage which is really really entertaining to watch then we're going to be getting frostgate for the exact same reasons we got it on the first build which is just to get people slowed down and keep them entrapped in that aoe damage we're going to be taking uh, Medallion of Troy for the exact same reasons we're going to get some magic defense that we really really need to have we're making it even beefier and um, the shield, of course. Now, this actually is going to give us 30% cooldown reduction. We have 10% from Flashy Boots, we have 10% from Frostscape, and we have 10% from Medallion of Choice. So that's going to max us out at 30% cooldown reduction, why, uh, which is why I said that you're going to want to take 10% cooldown reduction in your Arcana to max them out. And then the last item we're going to get is Hyoga's Edge. <clears throat> the normal attacks increase wearer's movement speed by 10%. So we're going to make Baldum even faster of a movement speed, and then it reduces the target's movement speed by 25% for two seconds. So the idea is we get right in the muck of things, we hit our second ability, start doing that triple AoE damage, and then we hit with one auto attack. This is where the beauty comes in. One auto attack is going to get you 30% movement speed reduction from Frost Cape, 30% movement speed reduction from his second ability, and then we're going to get a... 25% movement speed reduction from Hyoga's Edge, maxing the movement speed reduction out at 85% movement speed reduction, which is almost as much as 100% and just flat out stunning them because we have so much. Um, and then of course, we are going to be getting more movement speed for us, making it virtually impossible to be escaping Baldum when this is all going on. Like I said, I'm not 100% sure how viable this build is to be like, oh, the next great built Baldum build. I'm really, really certain the first two builds are going to be incredible for you guys on them. This one, though, I can promise you has a much, much um, enjoy, a really largely enjoyable base to it. The, the, the concept behind it is solid and it works. It doesn't make him the most tankiest, beefiest man in the world. Now, maybe you want to not be the tank. Maybe you want to be an off tank. This is a great off tank build for Baldum. 85% slow. Just by being near people and hitting them one time with an auto attack, 85% slow um, for the next two seconds, which is really, really solid and can really help you secure kills. All right, guys. That is it for the actual builds. Let's go talk about Arcanas. All right, guys, now we're here in the Arcana page, and the Arcanas that we're going to be going for all three builds for Baldum are all going to be identical. For Red, we're going to be going with Undomitable. We're going to be getting some attack speed, max HP, and armor. Um, the Reds don't really offer a whole lot as far as tanky stuff go. It's almost all damage, but we're going to get that extra 23 armor and that extra um, 337 health. So that'll add on. The attack speed comes in handy only when we want to proc the Frostcape passive, really. Um, that's basically it. Now, you know, we're talking about the last build that we discussed where you're doing the triple burns. You're also getting auto attacks off, which 
adds on to make it really four different kinds of damage. So that can help. Um, the attack speed is not totally worth this in that scenario. And then for purples, we're going to be going with um, Assassinate, actually. A lot of people would think that you'd go with Benevolence because of the HP and all that stuff. But I really, really want to get more movement speed on Balum so he can stay in the thick of things, doing what he does best, which is just screwing everything up for the enemy team. So the 10% extra movement speed and the 1.6% extra attack damage is going to work. Now, if you don't have Assassinate and you need to go with Gorilla, which is 10% attack speed, I w it's not that big of a deal. It's 16 attack damage isn't going to make the difference. They're both 10% movement speed. 10% attack speed is not going to really help that much, but it's better than have not having the moon speed at all. So one of those two is going to work. And then as far as the green goes, um, if you have Bastion and you want to go straight armor, that's fine. It's not my suggestion, though. Um, you know, some people aren't going to have what you need. Prowess is going to work fine, too. Those are just base extra tankiness. Um, the one that I would really focus on, and I'll talk about if you want to give 10% more cooldown to the final build, you're going to need to go with focus there to get that up. Um, <clears throat> now, the one that I would ultimately recommend to get on this one is simply just going to be getting mithril um mithril is just going to give you flat tankiness across the board um green is a lot more forgiving you could really do a few different things with green to 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 fill it yourself you could literally get any of bastion mithril prowess on the top or on the second row if you got focus and you needed that to get your extra cooldown reduction that's not a big deal um, or even all the way at the bottom, if you had Crusader, that would work. It's not ideal, but it's better than having something that totally doesn't fit at all. So that is going to be what you're going to be getting as far as Arkina goes. And then the last thing that we're going to talk about is going to be the talents. The talent that I'm going to recommend taking on the third build, of course, would be Punish, because you have to have Punish in order to best take advantage of that. And for the final build, or for the first two builds, what I'm going to recommend taking is two different talents that I essentially... I'll give you three talents you can take. Um, the first one being Disrupt. If you want a tower dive, Baldwin has great top power, uh, tower dive potential. We're talking about an instant 60% slow, not including his ultimate or his first ability, which are both hard crowd controls. Um, and then, of course, we have Flicker. If you need to Flicker to get out of danger or Flicker to get into the thick of things with your second ability to get that 60% off slow, that could work also. And if you really, really just want to remain beefy, play safe, you can always do heal. That's never going to be something that's going to be terrible. Um, that's always an option. But guys, I hope you guys appreciated the Baldwin video. I apologize that it is so, so late. Let's go over the builds one more time. Build number one has Aegis, Guild of Greaves, Frost Cape, Medallion of Troy, uh, Mail of Pain, and Amulet of Longevity. The build number two is just switching out the last item, Amulet of Longevity, for Crimson Banner. And that's just a matter of choice and how much gold you're getting throughout the game. And then build number three is going to be the fun build that we made, which has the really quadruple burn. We're going to be getting a burn from Leviathan. We're going to get a, be getting a burn from Mantle of Rob. We're going to be getting a burn from our auto attacks, or just extra regular damage from our auto attacks. And then we're going to be getting the damage from Frost Cape, as well as the slow from Frost Cape and the slow from Hyoga's Edge, which will top us out at 85% slows for two seconds every time we hit our second ability and get an auto attack off. All right, guys, that is it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will be working diligently on coming out with a really good Roxy build as well as a really good Arduin build coming up next. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, until next time.